Hey, what is up headhunters and executive recruiters? This is DSP, David Stefan Patterson, and today I have a special treat for you. I'm pulling a lesson directly from my seven figure headhunter accelerator private training program. Now, in that program, we do a super deep dive into how to develop and scale and sell a higher level offered to your market. And a lot of that involves things like Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads and email sequences and all those fancy things, you know, lead magnets, landing pages, etc. But one of the very first things you need to do is to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is dialed in. It's a super fundamental step and it's one of the things that I have my uh, private students go through uh, before they get to really anything else. Because quite frankly, most recruiters' LinkedIn profiles stink. If your LinkedIn profile reads like you're looking for a job, then it is not going to win you any business. So with that said, and without further ado, I'm going to play this lesson. And in this lesson, let me show you exactly what we're gonna be covering here. Uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, how to create a client and a candidate focused LinkedIn profile. We're talking about how to optimize your profile, keyword optimize so it shows up higher in the search results, how to create a compelling LinkedIn headline, uh, how to round out the rest of your LinkedIn profile. So we're talking about the summary section, work experience, uh, you know, skills, endorsements, that sort of thing. I talk about how to get LinkedIn recommendations as well. So anyway, with that said, I'm gonna play the lesson right now. And with that said, enjoy. All right, recruiters, let's talk about dialing in your LinkedIn profile. Now in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to develop a compelling uh, and a client and candidate focused LinkedIn profile that will be the hub of your first initial outreach efforts. So here's what we're gonna be covering today. First, how to craft a client and candidate focused LinkedIn profile that gets noticed. Now, unfortunately for most recruiters, well, actually fortunately for you, most recruiters' LinkedIn profiles are horrible. So we're gonna make yours stand out. We'll also learn how to optimize your LinkedIn profile that you stay on top of the search results. So we're gonna talk about keyword optimization. We'll talk about how to create a compelling LinkedIn headline. We'll talk about how to round out the rest of your LinkedIn profile. So that includes your summary section, your work experience, etc. How to get LinkedIn recommendations, which are very, very important. And then what your next steps will be after you dial in your LinkedIn profile. So let's talk just in general at first about uh, how to craft a nerve striking LinkedIn profile. You want the kind of LinkedIn profile where when they see it, the hairs rise on their arm. Again, you want a LinkedIn profile that really strikes a nerve. Now your LinkedIn profile is usually the very first impression of you online. It's actually not your website. For most of us, our clients and candidates will be checking us out on LinkedIn first. So your LinkedIn profile really is a sales letter more than anything else. It is not a resume and it shouldn't read like a resume. So if your LinkedIn profile reads like your resume, then you need to change that. Your LinkedIn profile is a sales letter. And ultimately, a good LinkedIn profile will attract leads and clients and candidates to you organically. It'll help build your professional reputation. It will establish your credibility and your authority leadership. Uh, it will lead to establishing trust with your audience faster, which in turn builds business relationships with key players in your market, which ultimately leads to you building your business and dominating your marketplace. But you have to remember, your LinkedIn profile must achieve the following. Three things. It must establish your authority leadership. It must highlight your prospect's problem and, and or pain. 
and show you or show how to solve it. In other words, always be thinking about what's in it for me. Now, not me, me, and not you, but for your clients and candidates reading this because that's what they're thinking. What's in it for me? Always be thinking through that lens. And last but certainly not least, it must also build trust and create engagement. So when you dial in your profile, your outreach will be much more effective. And again, we'll go into that in depth in the next module. And you'll also get inbound leads as well. But your signal will start to resonate with your, with your ideal clients above the noise they hear now. Now remember, we spoke about this in the lesson about tuning into your ideal client's signal, okay? There's a lot of white noise out there, especially on LinkedIn. Recruiters are by far the largest demographic on LinkedIn. And the vast majority of recruiters are what I call leg humping your ideal clients all day long, every single day. So the first step towards developing a signal that will resonate with your ideal clients above the fray starts with your LinkedIn profile. And your profile must be imbued with your compelling why. Remember, I said that's one of the main things that really truly differentiates you from everybody else. And they must see that from your profile. But it must also establish credibility and trust. And to do that, you need to make sure you have LinkedIn recommendations. You need to be able to describe your ideal client's problem and pain better than they can. Because if you can describe someone's problem and pain better than they can, they will assume you can fix it, or at least they will give you the benefit of the doubt. That's just human psychology at a very base level. So can you describe their ideal client's problem and pain better than they can? And by the way, you will be covering this at length in the avatar offer and the message lessons down below. And of course, you also establish credibility and trust through your achievements and your experience. And we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. You must also have a strong call to action or CTA that's paired with a strong piece of bait. And I'll show you an example here in a few minutes as I show you my own personal LinkedIn profile. But if you don't include a strong call to action, then they likely won't do anything. So I'll show you how to do that on your LinkedIn profile. And you're also going to want to position yourself as an authority through your content as well. Content is such a key component to establishing your authority leadership. And as you'll learn in the map and your message worksheet, it's also a key component to moving your ideal clients or your prospects through the different psychological beats that they need to go through to see your solution as being relevant to them. Now, it's important to realize that you only have seven seconds at most to wow your ideal client and or candidate, oftentimes much less. Think about when you're looking at resumes. You've got a ton of resumes in front of you to look at. What do you do? You look at a resume for a few seconds. You look for some keywords. You look at the headline, the professional summary, the formatting, and you decide, should I invest more time in this resume? Or should I not? You make that snap decision. Well, your ideal candidates and your ideal clients do the exact same thing because they don't have time to invest a lot of time into your profile unless they feel it might be worth it, unless there's something in it for them. Right? Remember, what's in it for me? So your LinkedIn profile has to speak to them very, very quickly. And it has to make a good first impression because it's very hard to overcome a bad first impression. And again, remember, your LinkedIn profile is usually the very first impression of you online. And decision makers usually avoid those with incomplete LinkedIn profiles or profiles that look like the recruiter's looking for a job. So again, if you're LinkedIn profile gives off that impression, you need to change it immediately. 
and a professional headshot or an action pose and a great cover photo will dramatically increase traffic to your profile. We're talking about a full order of magnitude, okay? That's a lot. So you want to make sure you include great pictures, a great cover photo and a great headshot or action pose. Now, it's important though, before you go and completely revamp your LinkedIn profile, you want to turn off your notifications, okay? Because what happens is as you start changing things on your profile, your, your network will be notified. So I advise that you turn this off. You can always turn it back on after you're done. But for right now, let's turn it off. So to do that, just go to your settings and privacy section. And under privacy, where it says share job changes, education changes, and work anniversaries from profile, just toggle that to no. And then, of course, you can always toggle it back to yes when you are done. So before we dig into the different components of your LinkedIn profile, let's talk about how to keyword optimize your profile. Because it's important that you, you keyword optimize so you can rank higher in search results. Now, when you think about uh, search or searching on Google versus LinkedIn, on Google, people tend to search for information. How do I recruit SAP talent, for example? Or how do I recruit financial talent? By LinkedIn, people tend to search for experts, right? specific people via title. So for example, SAP recruiter or finance recruiter. right? So you want to select your primary keywords. These are title-based keywords that you know your audience is going to be looking for. So in my case, SAP recruiter, SAP recruitment, for example. For you, it might be CFO recruiter, finance recruiter, nursing recruiter, nursing recruitment, right? And you want to add those to your headline. You also want to make sure you add them to your summary section, uh, your current and past work experience, and your skills section. Now, here's the thing that you need to realize in both your headline as well as your titles. If you are VP of client delivery, now that might be a big ego stroke for you to be a VP of client delivery, but do your candidates or clients look for a VP of, of, of client delivery when they search for a CFO recruiter on LinkedIn, or do they put CFO recruiter? So I wouldn't worry so much about the ego stroke of being a VP of client delivery. You are a CFO recruiter. Right? You can even say CFO headhunter, although that'll get you less search results than CFO recruiter. But think about what they are looking for, the words that they use. Right? So those are your primary keywords. You want to make sure, again, they're in your summary section, your current and past work experience section, as well as your skills section. But you also want to select your secondary keywords. Now, these are things that you do or sub areas in your niche. So uh, now I have some examples here for you in the next slide, but you also want to make sure that you include them in your summary section, your current and past work experience as well, and your skills section. So for example, if you're a, if you are in a, a CFO recruiter, your primary keywords can be CFO recruiter or CFO recruitment. You can use CFO headhunter, but again, you won't get as many uh, hits on that one. And secondary keywords might be VP Finance, Treasury, FP&A, Budgeting and Forecasting, Investor Relations, Strategic Planning, Controller, Accounting Manager, etc. But be careful not to obviously keyword stuff your profile because you need to make sure it looks neat and clean and is readable as well. So that's really all you need to do to make sure you keyword optimize your profile. Right, But again, it's really important that you include especially your primary but also your secondary in the summary section, uh, also the headline. I don't have it listed here, but also the headline, your current and past work experience as well as your skills section. Very important. So let's talk about the different components of your LinkedIn profile. And we'll start with the picture and the banner uh, or the cover photo. So you want to make sure you get a good 
headshot or an action shot. An action shot might be you up on stage or you speaking to a group of people or you in a sales meeting, etc. I don't mean an action shot like you kite surfing uh, or running a marathon. You want something professional. So either a headshot or an action shot in a professional environment. Now, it doesn't have to be professionally done, but it should look professional. The key here is for you to look friendly and inviting, but also to show some personality. Now, your banner photo should either be a call to action or something that increases your credibility and or social proof. So a lot of folks will use a cover photo that may look professional. In fact, actually, to be quite candid, a lot of recruiters don't even use a cover photo at all or have a crappy looking one, right? Maybe a vacation pic somewhere. Okay, you want to get rid of that. Now, a lot of recruiters will do something more professional, like say their company name or a photo of business people in a meeting uh, or just a photo that they, that they think looks cool, which is better than nothing. But let's make the most use of every little inch of real estate that we have. So let's use our cover photo for a purpose. So I would either have a call to action. So for example, to, to download my free guide on hiring, click here and there's a you know, maybe a link to uh, your landing page, although you can't really click a link in a banner photo necessarily, but you can at least uh, uh, spell out the landing page URL. Now, for me, I use it to boost my credibility. So what I do? Well, as you can see here, under uh, my, my cover photo, or actually it's in the cover photo itself, I list out the different publications I've been featured in, Inc., Fast Company, CIO Magazine, US News and World Report, and Computer World. I've got a ton of others I can use, but those are some of the bigger publications. I use that to increase my credibility as well to a certain degree my social proof. Maybe you can have a testimonial in here. You could even do that. But have a cover photo that at least does something for you. Very important. Now, let's talk about your headline. Now, your headline is the most important part of your profile, even more important than the headshot and the banner picture. And you only have 120 characters to work with because when somebody pulls, up, pulls you up in a search result, they're going to see your headshot, which is you know small, but they're looking at the title. And you have to capture a viewer's attention and inspire them enough to click on your profile and not somebody else's. So if you don't put anything in your headline at all, LinkedIn will default to your job title. But don't do that. So don't just put your title or what some people do, they'll list their title and then a list of services, which is better than nothing. I can see they're kind of keyword stuffing their headline. But it's not really going to be compelling. So it might be good to get into the search results, but it won't be compelling enough for them to click on your profile. So think about what makes you different. Show some personality. And why should somebody do business with you over your competitor? Now, there are three types of headlines that you can use. There's a keyword-based headline. There's more of a client-slash-benefit-focused headline, which is what I use. Well, a combination of keyword and client uh, benefit focus. And there's also a, cred a credibility builder headline as well. So let's take a look at some examples. So here's a, an example of a keyword headline. SAP recruiter, recruiting top flight technical architects, project managers, ABAP development. A lot of keywords in there, um, which is good, better than nothing. Uh, I prefer more of a client and benefit focused uh, headline. And I, I do have some keywords in here as well. I recruit SAP Rockstars and train Rockstar recruiters, empowering IT executives to hire the SAP leaders of tomorrow. And as you can see, that really ties into my why uh, that I, I listed earlier in this module. So there are some keywords in here as well, but this really is more client and benefit focused. That's the kind that I like, but again, 
You may prefer a keyword headline, which is certainly fine, or credibility headlines such as this. SAP Recruiter, again, still using that keyword, placed 500 SAP professionals in five years, or it could be Inc. 500 Company, which I'm not. I just threw that in there as an example, but something to establish your credibility. But for me, the way I look, at least from my profile, I already have in my banner, I'm building my credibility. So for me, I want to have a benefit-focused headline. But again, if you have maybe a CTA in your uh, banner, then maybe you want to build your credibility in your headline. Or maybe you would rather include a keyword headline. Uh, but you want to avoid cute or clever headlines. Okay. Now, I see a lot of clever headlines. And they certainly get attention but not the right kind of attention. Now, you can have a clever headline once you've built up your thought leadership and your authority leadership in your niche. Until then, I implore you, do not. It may be fun. It may get you some attention. All your recruiter buddies will think you're super smart and super snarky, etc., but it's not going to get you business. In fact, it may even detract from you getting business because you're not going to get the right kind of clicks on your profile. So again, I implore you, resist the urge to throw up a cute or a clever headline because you think they're cool. Also, do not call, and this is my pet peeve, do not call yourself a thought leader, a visionary, or an influencer in your headline. Um, if you are a thought leader, do not have to call yourself a thought leader. Same thing about being a visionary. If you call yourself an influencer, you're probably not an influencer. So, uh, so resist the urge to throw those things in your headline. Uh, again, they're going to detract, and there's a lot of people that simply just make fun of people who call them th th themselves thought leaders. So do not do it. Now, let's talk about cute or clever headlines one more time. I was just going to throw this up for fun. So here are some uh, examples of some cute or clever headlines, which again, don't use. But again, I'm just throwing these things up for fun because I think they're funny. So first we have head honcho, headhunter, and sometimes head shrinker, and living proof that the only good recruiter is not a dead recruiter. Men want to be me, women want to be with me, and companies want to hire me. It's simple as that. Quite possibly the only person on LinkedIn who isn't a results-oriented team player with excellent interpersonal skills. It's actually quite funny. Able to sit in my chair for extended periods of time without numbness or fatigue. Because I'm a champion and you're going to hear me roar. Cut me and I bleed content. It's actually quite a good one for, for a content writer or a copywriter. If you don't want to hire me, but like what you see anyway, feel free to connect. I'm young, free, and single. YOLO. And lastly, I invented the two-hour lunch break, which has been adapted by sales slackers everywhere. Now, again, I just include these for fun because I think they're a bit humorous. But again, I implore you, resist the temptation to put in a clever or cute headline because you think it's cool, you can do so after you've established your dominance in the marketplace. But until you've done that, it will not help you at all. Now let's talk about creating a client-focused summary. Now your summary is the first thing a viewer sees after clicking on your profile. So while your headline is the most important of your profile, and of course, your profile picture and your banner, I'd say, come in at a close second. Your summary is right in there, maybe tied for second or at least a close third. So you do not want to let it read like a resume, nor should it be a bio where it's all about you. Remember, what's in it for me? That's what your clients are thinking. Now, you have a 2,000 character limit to draw the reader in and make them want what you have to offer. But also keep in mind, you only have the first two lines to get them to, to read your summary in the first place. So you have to remember, you've got to draw them into the summary, and then in the summary, draw them into your solution. 
So you want to let them know that they're in the right place by speaking directly to them in a summary. And I'll give you an example of what mine looks like. Now, here's some tips on this. You want to write in first person, not third. First person is I, we, etc. Third is he, she. Okay, so uh, you don't want to say uh, he, she, etc. That's third. Again, you want to write in first person. It's more personal. Now, you can also use Unicode symbols or, or emojis, in other words. Don't use a lot. Less is more, but do use some because it does draw attention to things like your CTA or different benefit statements, etc. You also want to include your why in your summary. Also, don't forget to include your primary and your secondary keywords. But again, do not keyword stuff your resume. And ultimately, you want to speak to their pain and or their vision. Now, if you haven't gone through it yet, before you really dial in your LinkedIn profile, make sure you complete the avatar offer and messaging lessons because you really are not going to understand the pain that your ideal clients are going through nor the vision that they want for themselves until you go through those lessons and complete the worksheets. And then you want to take that information Right? The, the way they describe that pain and the way they describe those, that vision for themselves, and you want to imbue that into your summary. Now, a great client focus summary includes a credibility or a social proof statement. You want to include your why story. Also, who is your ideal client? They should be able to self-select when they read this. Um, what is their problem? What is their pain? What's their vision? What's your solution? Have a call to action in there and include some form of rich media. Now, rich media, in essence, are simply things like videos, PDFs, slide shares that you can include on in your summary. I've got videos, but, you know, again, slide shares are great. PDFs are great. PowerPoints are great. But you want to include some form of rich media as well. So let me show you an example of what that will look like. Okay, I'm back. And I'm going to show you what my summary here looks like. All right, let me scroll down. So remember I said you only have two lines to get them to read your summary. So this is really all that they see. So as you can see here, I try to draw them in by saying, ready to take your career to the next level? Click here to see more, all right? Now, you don't need to include something like this, but for me, I'm trying to get them to click the see more button. Now, when they click that, they will see featured in, and again, I'm establishing credibility. Um, and of course, I start by saying I'm the founder and managing director of the Kineta Group and the SAPRecruiter.com, including my, my uh, authority building site here. And also a member of Sanford Rose, a top 10 ranked worldwide retained search firm, uh, parentheses, executive search review. So again, I'm just establishing more credibility. I am the SAP recruiter, primary keyword. And I help CIOs, IT execs, and talent acquisition pros hire and retain the best SAP talent in the known universe. In my 15 years as an SAP recruiter, primary keyword, I estimate that I've personally interviewed between five to 6,000 candidates for all levels to include architect up through the C-suite. I know what an SAP rock star looks like. What is an SAP rock star? They're the top 10% of your workforce. They work harder. They work smarter, and they make their leaders look good. They make you look good. See what I'm doing here? Vision. Here's the problem, though. About to get into pain. 46% of all new hires turn out to be mishires within 18 months. That's a flip of the coin. and can wreak havoc with your leadership career. So again, establishing pain. Now comes the CTA. Your first step to solve this, read the SAP Rockstar Blueprint, our free 100-page guide on eliminating then mishires, building elite teams, and crushing all expectations. And as you can see here, I've got a couple more little emojis, little finger point deals here to the saprecruiter.com forward slash the blueprint, and of course, my contact information. Now, the disadvantage that I have with my LinkedIn profile is that I have to, to do double the work because I also 
run a coaching practice. And so I do have a little bit of a blurb here for my coaching practice as well. So I actually have less space than most people considering that I have to really do double duty with my summary. And then as you can see here, I have some rich media. So for example, I have one of my videos here. Let's see if it loads up. Might be lagging here. Here's one, right? Um, so they can click on these videos, watch these videos here, etc. But this is an example of my summary. Now you also want to uh, use your current work uh, experience as another opportunity to shine, as another opportunity to draw your ideal client and candidates in. So when you fill out that portion of your profile, don't just focus on your experience because again, your profile is not a resume. This is an opportunity to keyword optimize your profile, so include your primary and your secondary keywords in there. And of course, if you have more than one area of focus in your business, you can create more than one experience section within your company, so keep that in mind. Now, a client-focused current experience section includes your credibility and social proof statement, your company why story, who is your ideal client, what's their problem pain, what's their vision, what's your solution, call to action, and some rich media. As you can see, it's really very similar to your summary section, but don't let it be a carbon copy. So I want to show you an example of mine. Okay, so let's scroll down to my current experience. Here it is, and I'll just read it. So I am the SAP recruiter. Again, primary keyword. In this fourth generation of SAP, where the demand for talent continues to outstrip supply during the tightest labor market in the U.S., or sorry, the tightest labor market the U.S. has seen in 50 years, access to the top SAP talent has become ever more critical to not only the success of companies in the SAP ecosystem, but the success of the individual SAP leaders themselves. The war for SAP talent has officially been declared in the Kineta Group, is your surest path to victory. We have consistently been recognized, and this is the, the credibility section, we have consistently been recognized as the leading global executive search firm in the SAP space since 2010. Our singular focus has been on one thing and one thing only, you, the SAP leader. Our mission is to help you empower your enterprise through hiring rock star talent. So I'm getting to my why here. We attribute our massive success to not only uh, our SAP industry focus, but also the four pillars of our proprietary Rockstar delivery system. So here I get into my solution. Total SAP talent map. Our near complete 98% market map of North America's entire SAP Canada pool ensures that you have access to automated deep talent search processes to identify the top 10% of talent. One to many pre recruitment or P recruitment. Our 24 7 365 digital marketing platform is an always on platform that engages passive candidates and accelerates our ability to influence and attract the top performers you want to hire. Laser focused engagement. Our unique hybrid blend of old school outbound executive search and new school inbound digital strategies ensure that every top performer that matters is aligned with your opportunity. Bulletproof selection. Using our data sets gleaned from thousands of interviews, we work with you to design a five-part bulletproof selection process that essentially de-risks your hiring decision. So here I go into much more detail about my solution, even more so than I did in the summary. And I wrap it up with, uh, we are true headhunters, recruiting in the digital age. And of course, after this is the CTA. Check out the SAP Rockstar Blueprint, our free 100-page guide on eliminating the mishires, building elite teams, and crushing all expectations. So there you go. So as you can see here, and I've also included uh, another form of rich media. In this case, this is the top 10 list of which we are number nine since I am part of SRA, so I can actually say this. Uh, so there you go, establishing credibility. So as you can see from my example, my summary 
I'm sorry, my current work section really included all of these things, but it was not a carbon copy of my summary. In fact, this one probably went into even more depth about my solution than my summary did simply because I just didn't have a lot of room in my summary because I'm also talking about my coaching practice in that summary. So let's look at some additional sections to round out your profile. There's your past work experience. Now, I would de-emphasize this, but you still want to include that in there, just enough to show your real history and provide some color to your profile. You want to make sure that your skills and endorsements are lined up with both your primary and secondary keywords. Now, you want to list your top three most relevant skills. So, you should have already a list of skills that people are endorsing. You want to make sure that your top three most relevant are your top three in there because that is what people will tend to see. You can put in your post-secondary education, uh, your volunteer experience section. Now, for this one, you actually have to add that profile section. It's not in there automatically, but if you do a lot of volunteer work, that could be a great thing to publicize. Any accomplishments that you've had, this helps build your authority. So publications, uh, certifications, courses, organizations. You can also include things like patents, etc. I just included the things that I thought were more relevant for recruiters. But listing a patent, listing test scores really may not be as big of a deal. And of course, also articles, which, which will be your original content. So let me show you some examples of what I mean here. Now, if you look at under, oh, where is it here? Under achievements or accomplishments, excuse me. I've got two publications. These are my lead magnets, right? I've got the SAP Rockstar Blueprint. All right. And of course, if they click on here, they can go to my landing page and they can download it, right? And of course, I also have here the Lighthouse Method, which uh, you probably read uh, before you started here in the program. And if they go to this, they can then download the Lighthouse Method. And of course, organization, you know, was uh, on the board of directors for Suncoast Waldorf, which is the uh, school that my daughter went to, her grade school. So as you can see here, um, that's what you list for accomplishments. Uh, as you can see here under skills, where is that? All right, my top skills, recruit, recruiting, executive search, and SAP, okay? I want to make sure that things like Excel, Word, right, are not listed as my main skills. I want my top skills to be here, and it will also help uh, keyword optimize your profile as well. All right, so uh, lastly, I want to make one point here. When it comes to your articles, your original content, uh, it is important that you have a list of articles or original content on your LinkedIn profile. Now, we're not going to cover that here. We're going to talk about that in the next module when we talk about your uh, LinkedIn email strategies. But just know that for now, you will need to eventually uh, start building up your body of work, and, and by that I mean your original content, on your LinkedIn profile. It's very important. Don't worry about it so much now, but we're going to get to that later. You also want to update your contact information. So you want to make sure that you grab your vanity URL. Now, most of us, when we're given a LinkedIn profile, or we create a LinkedIn profile, the ending URL, the ending slug to the URL, is just a bunch of numbers and letters. So you want to make sure you grab your vanity URL. If you can, use your name if possible. Um, or if not, maybe something to do with your niche, for example. And then you want to set your public visibility to on. And I'll show you how to do this here in a moment. Uh, you want to make sure that you're also getting uh, that people that aren't even on LinkedIn, that are just searching through Google, also can find your profile. You also want to include any websites you have. Either your main website, if you have several websites, list those as well. Uh, I'll show you how you can give them unique names. Uh, they may not make sense now, but I'll show you that little hack here in a moment. And you also want to add in your social media handles as well as any other contact information that you think is relevant. So to do that, you want to click on uh, under your profile where it says see contact info, click that. That'll pull up this page here. 
Once you do that, you want to click on that little pencil icon that I have highlighted. And when you do that, you can then put in your website information. So if you put in your website, if, if you click on the drop down to the right and click on other, you could then, where it says type other, type in what that website is. So now when they go to your contact information, this is what they see. Looking for SAP talent, then they go to the website, right? You could do that if you click on other and then type in the title for that site under type. Now to get your vanity URL, uh, you are gonna want to click on edit profile and URL. And from there, click on the little pencil next to your URL. And, for, and there you should be able to change the the URL itself. Now you can only do this in a limited number of times. I think it's either four or five times within a six month period. So make sure you pick one that you want and just stick with it. You also wanna make sure you edit your visibility. Make sure your profile's public visibility is set to on for everybody. We are in the business of being found and finding other people. We're not here to, to be private. Okay, so you want to set your profile's public visibility to on. Now, one of the most important sections of your LinkedIn profile will be your recommendations. These are quite literally the most powerful form of proof that you could ever have. Well, probably the most powerful really are video testimonials, but barring that, these are the most powerful form, even more so than testimonials on your website. Because think about it, when you when somebody goes to your profile and they pull up recommendations, there's a link right there to the person who gave the recommendation that makes it much more legitimate. Now, if they go to your website and they see a testimonial and it says from Brad G, director of a large manufacturing organization, the first thing people think of when they see that is they think it's fake. That's why LinkedIn profile recommendations are so powerful because you can't fake those. The link to the person who gave the testimonial is right there. So you wanna make sure you actively work on, on collecting as many as you possibly can. So here's how to get them. First, strike while the iron is hot. So if somebody emails you and says that they liked your content or says, or says anything about your service or maybe the work that you've done with them, right? Respond back and say, hey, I really appreciate you sharing that with me. And that would make a fantastic LinkedIn recommendation. Would you be open to writing that in a recommendation for me? And most of the time, they will. Boom, you've got a LinkedIn recommendation. Or when you recommend somebody else, ask them if it's appropriate to also recommend you as well. You also want to make sure you tell them why you want it. So to if you just ask for a recommendation, they may not give it to you. If you ask them and say, I would love to be able to reach more clients just like you, reach more candidates just like you, give them a reason they're more likely to give you the recommendation. You should also suggest what to write or even provide a sample for them. But be careful about this. You don't want all your testimonials to sound exactly the same. Once they provide a testimonial or recommendation on your LinkedIn profile, then use those testimonials on your website. And if somebody gave you a testimonial for your website, ask them to put that testimonial on LinkedIn. Now, if you need them now and you don't want to wait for said iron to be hot, then reach out to your current clients or your past clients and candidates and ask for them. You may not get as many, but you will get some. So start working on getting your recommendations right away. And again, when you've, if you get a good one, use that as a testimonial for your website. Hey guys, welcome back and thank you for 
watching my lesson on dialing in your LinkedIn profile. Hope you got a lot of value out of it. And now go out there and get your LinkedIn profile dialed in. But that said, do not copy me. Uh, that is a rule that I have in my program. And for you folks as well, uh, come up with your own content, come up with your own LinkedIn profile. I've seen a lot of copies of my LinkedIn profile over the last couple of years. So I would recommend that you do it yourself. Self. And with that being said, if you're interested in exploring the Accelerator program and what it can do for you and your practice, there's a link down below. Feel free to book a call and I'd be happy to chat with you to see if it might potentially be a fit. In addition, if you would like to learn how to effectively scale your practice using my five new model principles, I have a free training link down there as well. Feel free to go and click the link, register and, and watch that training. And it, that training is great, and so I would recommend getting in on that as well. And with that being said, don't forget to like the video, comment down below, we wanna hear your thoughts, and also post in a link to your LinkedIn profile I'll be happy to take a look at it. And if you post your LinkedIn profile down below, I will also give you my thoughts. With that said, guys, thank you very much. And as always, happy hunting.